Hello, hello. I had an interesting project for an application that needed to be deployed on a Docker Swarm and uh, needed a persistent storage. So, uh, because it's a hot topic now and it's, it was an interesting challenge, I decided to, uh, to show you one way to solve it. Now, I will use uh, Docker for um, AWS because it's the easiest way to deploy a, a Docker Swarm. And here, all we need is just to set um, the number of uh, managers and then the number of nodes. I'll select just the, the bare minimum so I don't have to wait long for this to complete. And then I will uh, select the SSH keys that I uploaded previously. And um, next, next, and then that's it. Just wait for this to complete and then we'll, uh, we'll continue. Okay, the swarm is ready, so now let's create uh, the storage server. For this we will use EFS, which is um, just basically an NFS version 4 server. I will add it to the same virtual private cloud which was created by the cloud formation script, so that the containers can access the server. And then here I created a, an NFS NFS security group which basically opens port uh, 2049 so that it allows an inbound connections to the NFS server okay so again it, it will take a while for this to complete so I will continue when it's ready so the storage server is ready and now let's access the manager node. I'll get the IP from the EC2 console. This is the IP I need to use. By default you need to use the Docker user and the SSH keys uh, you selected when you deployed the CloudFormation uh, script. And you can only log in to the manager's node. I will log in here because I will need both consoles. So the swarm is running. And before I continue, let me explain you a little bit. Um, let me explain you why I even decided to create this image. Initially, I thought that um, I will just log into each node and install the client and then just mount the folder, right? But the problem is that when you log in, uh, in Docker for AW, um, AWS, Docker for uh, Windows and Docker for Mac, you log in into a, a container. So here, this is, not, this is not the host, this is a container. So if you want to run commands on the host, you need to find um, a way to somehow escape this container and run the commands on the host. And at this point, I decided I will create that image and I will use it to deploy it as a global service so it runs on every node and it um, automatically uh, mounts the NFS uh, server and the NFS folder. Now the second problem, I'm using NSEnter NS to uh, escape the container and uh, run the commands. NSEnter uh, just changes the namespace so you can, um, if you're interested, you can read about more about it on the internet. The second problem is that uh, I want to deploy this as a service. Basically, I want this to run on every node, but by default, service create doesn't allow privilege mode. Uh, I think they're working on implementing this, but for now it doesn't it doesn't allow it, and the container needs privilege mode so it can use NS Enter. And now what I found is that um, this, this guy, Madhu, he created a, an integrated a Swarm exec script. This is integrating all of the mobile Linux they use for the, for the Docker, for Mac, AWS and Windows. So it will be in all of these. And all you need, all it does is uh, uh, it creates um, 
it creates a global service but it creates it in a different way it just runs runs the the commands uh, manually and you can specify any command you want so um, here I'm, I'm specifying the image I created and I'm, I'm uh, using here I need to put the server IP and uh, it's using privilege mode the restart uh, option um, it's here because uh, if you restart the host you need to run this again so basically this needs to run on every restart even if you kill um, the container after you, you start it it will still continue to work because the NFS is already mounted but you will lose the locks so this container runs to mount the NFS and then using it, I notify wait to display the logs about the, the mounted folder changes. So let's run this. I need to get the, the server IP. We're using only two environment variables, server and mount. Each one is self-explanatory. Uh, let's get the the IP or the DNS from here. Now I'm using um, EFS, but you can use any any other NFS server that is a uh, version four. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, and now to check the logs, when you're in a, a Docker for AWS, you can't uh, you can't display any logs directly. You need to go through the CloudWatch service on a AWS. So you can see the logs for all of the containers running on the swarm, they're sent to the CloudWatch. I think this is the one. Yes, well this basically shows that uh, uh, the NFS is mounted completely. Now let's, the next thing is um, Let's add some data. And now let's run another global service that will just monitor uh, the content of this of this folder, which is basically the one that uh, I'm using for the, the NFS. And then I will check Okay, this is the one that will display the the folder content. Yeah, so here it is. Um, okay, now let's run a simple Alpi container and make some changes to that shared folder. I already have a few um, files here, so let's remove these. And just add. A new one. And now if I check the logs again. Uh, 
there it is the only folder inside the only file is inside is is the new and remember this is on every node on the cluster so if I open another one you will see the same thing if I add another file it will show as well it shows both files and again on the last node it's the same thing let me check if I forgot anything um, yes it's only NFS4 because I need it from Amazon but it's easy to change uh, with a new infinity they're working on a new storage plugin so um, hopefully once they uh, implement as a plugin this will be obsolete and we don't have to do any of this here is the here is the link to um, the actual image so you can check it. okay that's it thank you thank you thank you